Hurry now, fleshling, and prepare. The infinite awaits. Nightingale, a game that I was eagerly awaiting for, a game that can be surmised as nothing but a game with potential, potential being when it's not good enough and it needs a ton of work. That is essentially the summation of what Nightingale is right now. And so um, I'm a big fan of um, survival craft games. Uh, my name is Roby and this is my review of Nightingale after spending 194 hours playing the early access um, game. And so, um, Nightingale itself, the entire premise of the game starts with being able to traverse multiple realms using what is called realm cards. But not just being able to traverse different realms using realm cards, but also being able to alter the fabric of the rules or the fabric of that realm by using what's called minor realm cards. Now, um, like I said, that it shows a lot of promise, but onto when you actually play the game before you realize how limited it, that exact promise is. Um, the realms you can pick is split into three biomes. You have your desert biome, your first biome, and your swamp biome, and that's it, nothing else. It's always just those three biomes. Now, um, with the game being procedurally generated, you think that's going to offer varying gameplay when you traverse those realms, since each realm, as you request for one, is procedurally generated in AWS servers, but that is not the case at all. Um, the procedural engine itself is split from very specific tile sets to um, make the realm for you. And so let's say you go into a desert biome, uh, let's say the astrolabe desert biome, for instance, or let's say the provisional desert biome, and you finish that biome, you reset it, and you request that same type of biome again. The only thing that's going to change is the placement of the points of interest and also the placement of specific visual set pieces in that biome itself, nothing else. It's always going to be exact game the exact same gameplay loop. You jump into a realm. If you're farming, you f go to different places to farm different materials you're looking for. If it's hide, um, wood, if it's ore, stuff like that. The points of interest will always be the exact same thing, which brings the repetitive nature of the game itself. And so now before I get into all the, um, the bad and ugly of the game, let's start with the good points first, because um, honestly, the game is uh, I'll say enjoyable at best that's that's the most I can put it and that's with me being as lenient and as favorable in my words for the game itself outside of that the game is severely lacking in a bunch of areas which you find out in the, in the rest of the review itself and so starting with the good points and so the way I'll break down this, this review of Nightingale is I'll have a section for the good I will have a section for the bad, and I'll have a section for the downright ugly parts of the game. Okay, so let's start with the good part. Now, in regards to visuals, the game can be visually stunning. Now, I said I would curve it, though. The visually stunning parts of the game is the skybox. The skybox box of um, Nightingale is visually stunning. I've had to pause the game a few times press F4 to hide my UI elements and take screenshots because of how gorgeous the skybox is. But the skybox in itself is not interactive, it's just a filler for the game um, to make the environment look more believable or immersion, basically. Now, apart from the uh, visuals, one of the other good parts of the game is the sky um, is the environmental set pieces. And so when you traverse different realms, you see specific set pieces, like you see specific statues, uh, objects scattered across the 
realm or the procedurally generated map you're currently traversing to, um, those pieces invoke questions in regards to the lore of the game itself or the world itself or alludes to world building. And that's about it, really. Now, um, some other good aspects of the game is the ambient sound. Um, if you, I always advise to, I would advise to play this game using headphones, as when you play the games with headphones, you hear a lot of ambient sound like um, birds um, tweeting in the background, stuff like that. You hear, if you're close to a stream, you hear the sound of water, and stuff like that. Now, um, apart from the ambient sound in the game, the sound score of the game is also pretty good. Um, what I mean by the sound score is the background music you hear as, you, as you're playing the game. Now, um, the vocals in the game, that's the voice recorded lines, even though severely limited to just one character, in this case, um, the character named Pock, a fae, the, the voice lines are actually pretty good in regards to how well that vo the voice actor did in regards to those voice lines and the delivery of those voice lines now um sad to say that's about it for what is good about this game so and again like i said i'm treating this game in my review with kid gloves and being as favorable as i can to the game but that's literally about what's good about nightingale now let's start with the bad of the game and the bad of the game here is where i'll talk about all some of the unfavorable stuff before we get to the ugly parts of the game. Now, the part of the game is that because the game is in early access, it is a glitch fest. It is bug ridden. It's it's completely bug ridden to the point wherein that it actually hampers in the enjoyment of the game itself. Um, there are a lot of game breaking bugs. There are a lot of progression um, progression bugs in the game. I'll give you an example. There's an ongoing bug right now wherein player respite realms are literally dis disappearing in, from the game. And so a respite realm is kind of like your home world, lack of a lack of a better way to put it, or your home realm where you go in, you build your base, all that kind of stuff, you do your craft and all that kind of stuff. Now, I have made two characters in the game throughout my 194 hours of playtime in this game. And one of my characters is, as of right now, I cannot play that character because the home realm for that character is gone poof. It's been four days now since when it's gone, since my character's home realm has disappeared. And I've submitted two tickets so far in regards to recovering that. Until today, as of this recording, there is still no response back from the support team in regards to the status or the progress. I cannot play that character. Well, I can still play that character, but I cannot access my home realm, which if I need to craft any gear piece, which was what I was doing the last time I played that character, I cannot do that because my entire base, crafting benches, materials I spent hours farming is all gone. That is an example of a game breaking bug. Apart from that, other bugs in the game include um, crafting not working, teleporting and arriving at the wrong location, um, minor ROM cards not working properly. Um, it's just bought one, one bug after the other, trying to teleport to a realm and you just get disconnected from the game completely. Um, just stuff like that, that hampers one's enjoyment of the game itself. Now, um, there are a bunch of other bugs in the game, like which I'll class as parts of the ugly sections of the game. Um, so there's inconsistency with items. For instance, you can have two ingots that are named differently, and even though the, even though they should be the exact same ingot, it's the game treats it as two different ingots. It doesn't make any sense at all. You have instances wherein in the game itself, while you're, go, while you're crafting or going through items, there's, there are tons of missing icons. And it's so, and, they, and the game just supplements it with a generic icon to the point where it's hard to visually differentiate one item from the next when you're going through items in your inventory or your containers or your boxes or while crafting. Now, um, 
other issues is that you have workbenches that are supposed to show specific traits that are inherited either from the environment or from augmentations. Workbenches do not consistently show those traits. You'll have to literally select that workstation, go into inspect so you can see the traits that are the workbench is benefiting from. You have instances where workbenches are also showing the incorrect number of traits. Um, your workbench will show it's having five traits, but unless you inspect it, it could be showing less number of traits or a lot more than five traits. And that's just an example. You have instances where in, um, you have broken material crafting. So the premise of crafting in Nightingale is to be able to use materials that have specific bonuses or uh, bonuses to it to craft specific components that inherit those bonuses and then I'll use different components to make like armor pieces or weapon pieces or tool pieces. Now, it's such that there is um, a thing in the game right now when you can exploit that system, when while you're making specific material pieces, you can double, triple, and keep increasing the bonuses that an item is an item supposed to provide where you have um, overpowered items in the game. It's surprising that in this day and age, and mind you, this is 2024, the developer at no point in time thought to introduce diminishing returns when it comes to uh, material crafting and um, bringing stats into other materials or components. Not At no point did they think of that. Not only that, they now think about capping such things. Even though the game visually shows that as a cap, which is more, many times higher than what it's supposed to be, the game doesn't actually cap it. it the the um, multipliers for the bonuses just keep on going. Like you have your melee modifiers, your range modifiers, your crit modifiers, your movement speed, stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. Now, um, there are also instances where in there, are no, there are no quality of life items or additions to the game. Um, like there's no item searching containers. And this is a problem because most of the items you have or majority of items you have do not have icons to them. So there's no way to visually distinguish one item from the next. And so having a way to search for items in containers or your inventory by typing what you want is not present in the game. Um, you also do not have remote access to storage while you're crafting, which I do not understand why this is not in the game, even though they promised to add stuff like this kind of feature to the game down the line. The fact that the game released without having that feature is a, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's puzzling at best. Now, um, one of the other ugly aspects of the game is that it's the game's gameplay loop is extremely repetitive. So let me summarize the gameplay loop to, of Nightingale to you. You log into the game, use a ROM card to um, to create a, a ROM at your request. It could be a swamp, forest, or desert biome. And you use the major cards to determine the difficulty. It could be provisioner, haunt, gloom, whatever difficulty you want. You go into that realm, you um, get the different points of interest and also traders on the map too. You go to um, a specific tower to unlock points of interest if you don't want to explore them naturally to unlock the locations on the map. You go through those points of interest which are the same type of events on repeat at Newsome. You you do those events. It's either going to be a bastion of agility, a bastion of might, stuff like that. Uh, might, you have to kill enemies. Agility, it's platforming with how bad traversing is in the game. <laughs> kind of puzzling to be honest and then you have the bastion of intellect where you have to um, observe certain objects light up in this sequence and you just have to repeat that sequence to complete the objective itself those are the three main objectives you have on the map and it's scattered all over the map that's it and the goal of doing this is to get essence or a, a tiered essence based on the difficulty you're playing on as your reward once you complete that, you get your essence or you kill enemies, harvest materials to get resources. You go back to your respite realm. You craft resources to improve your gear score. You go back into another realm, rinse and repeat. 
at some point if you go through the very short story you get to the watch which is supposed to be the end game for nightingale and i put end game in quotes because that is also pretty lackluster and your typical vault run just involves the majority of people playing being extremely clueless in regard to what's going on because the game doesn't do a good job explaining what you're supposed to do and everybody just zergs objectives the few people that know what they're supposed to do especially when it comes to specific objectives in certain rooms they complete those objectives you traverse to the first room second room an intermediary room a third room and then get to the boss room and it, the bosses you fight are bosses you've run into during while you're playing through the campaign it's the sun giant and um, elder eoton tree and also um, Hambala, if you've encountered him in the game in the swamp biome. Those are the three bosses for the three different vault types you have in the game. You have your desert vault, your forest vault, and also your swamp vault. That's it. Literally. Nothing else. You do that over and over, rinse, repeat, no variety whatsoever. That's that's the gameplay loop for Nightingale. Not just that, um, building in Nightingale is semi-enjoyable. Um, the building pieces look good, but building in itself is very limited, especially when you compare it to games like Ark Survival Evolved or Ark Survival Ascended. You compare it to games like Valheim. You compare it to even more recent offerings like Enshrouded. You, re you quickly realize how limited and restrictive building a Nightingale is. Now, um, some of the other ugly parts of the game is character visuals. Um, the game has a character creator, but good luck in regards to that. No matter what you do, uh, your character is going to come out either subpar or just downright ugly. The character models are they appear to be low polygon. I doubt they're low polygon, but it's probably they're probably going to use the excuse that the character models are stylized, but the character models are just downright ugly, honestly. Um, now, in regards to NPCs that you interact with in the game, NPCs in the game are lifeless. They have no personality. There's nothing interesting to them, and they're just dull. Not only that, um, NPCs that you can recruit, pathfinding is so atrociously bad in this game that your NPC literally teleports most of the time to get to you. Now, most people use NPCs as pack mills since they can carry, they have a backpack and they have inventory space. Good luck half the time trying to get your NPC to come to you so you can offload what you're carrying when you're over encumbered onto the NPC. Half the time it's ignoring you. The de devs have acknowledged this and their the hope here is that they're going to add controls for NPCs down the line um it's not in the game right now so good luck using your um your recruitable character half the time they're disappearing they're doing what you want them not to do they're destroying your base by chopping out trees next to it they're taking precious um item resources and throwing it like wood or specific types of wood throwing into the fire basically right now M recruitable npcs in nine are more of a liability than an improvement to the gameplay loop itself now um that's it really for Nightingale um, in the 192, 194 hours of playtime I've had with this game over um, and that playtime shared between two characters. My advice for Nightingale is if you're brave, go ahead and purchase it, download it and play it. But right now with a, with a plethora of games coming out and games that even came out the same year before Nightingale, they're there are lots of options you can lots of better options in a survivor journal that you can play honestly compared to nightingale uh, my advice for anyone who's on the fence on deciding if they should pick up this game is to just wait the game is entirely unpolished right now it's a bug it's a bug ridden mess save yourself the headache and your money and wait to when the game is, a, is is in a much better state like i said the game shows potential potential being when something is not good enough or nowhere good enough and needs a lot of polish and that's it guys my review eric uh, for nightingale with that happy gaming everyone peace the fey wilds await and so too nightingale <laughs>